Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 13 of the processing tutorial. Uh, if you remember from last lesson, what we got working was a little program like this. And these balls bounce around and we want to turn this into a game of some sort. Now, to turn something in this into a game at least, all we're really going to do is add a scoring mechanism and we're just going to say game over when the game is over. So to do that, we're going to use text, and we're also going to use a type of timer that times in milliseconds. And when we're done, this will be the final version for this program. So next lesson, we're going to move on to a new project and something that's hopefully going to lead to a, a bit more sophisticated techniques. And you're going to learn about object-oriented programming, and you're going to learn about uh, how to do everything we did here and do it probably in a lot less code and make it even more flexible than we've already made it. Now, let's go ahead and review what we did. Uh, what we did was we added the mouse pressed uh, in lesson 12 and the mouse press just t calculated the distance from where we click to the center of all the balls each individually and then said am I am I inside the ball or not inside the ball and if you were inside the ball then it moved the ball off screen and this is really really poor practice because of, of this one reason we are still drawing these balls off the screen they're still being drawn at this negative 100, negative 100 point, and that means we're wasting time drawing balls that we don't need to draw anymore. Unfortunately, the arrays that we're using are not really flexible enough to, to, to delete things, so we're still going to have to loop 50 times. I could have added an if statement in here to check if the ball is off the screen or not, but even that's still really not the best of practices, and we're going to learn a much better way to do all of this very soon. But I want to show you what it's actually doing off screen. Because the ball here, when it moves off, it's still being, it's still being drawn, and it's still trying to move. But since it's all off the screen, it's just bouncing back and forth, because it keeps switching neg its negative x and, and its negative y delta. So it's going positive x delta, negative x delta. So the balls are kind of just up there moving back and forth really quick. And we can see that by setting this to negative 3.1 and by setting this to negative 3.1. Now if I do this and I click on a ball, let me click on these, you're gonna see, see how there's ball, the ball's up here. And it can't get back onto the screen because I've set the I've set this, the location, at something less greater rather. Uh, than the than the speed that com it can possibly be because the speed remember can only be up to negative three or sorry as low as negative three or up to negative uh, positive three so this right here when I set it to this the ball will never be able to get back on the screen because in that one draw loop cycle it can never move more than three all right so this is really bad because I'm drawing these all off the screen and we still have to run this loop. So if I if I had a million balls there and I'd click all but one, it would still be drawing all those other balls and this loop would still be really, really slow. So just keep that in mind. I just, I just want you to remember that this is not a good way of doing things, but it's a great way of showing you how to use all of these and get a lot of practice with them. So it has its pros and cons. Now, uh, what we want to do in this lesson then is add text because we want to put a score on here. And to do that, I'm going to add something called points. And points, I'm just going to give zero points to start with. And then we're going to draw our points uh, on the screen. And to do that, we're going to use the text function. But I want to draw it after I have drawn my ellipse because I want the ball to go behind my points. I don't want my points to ever uh, be covered up by the balls bouncing around. So I'm going to put it below the ellipse here and I'm going to use something called text and text has three parameters at least one of its functions has three parameters uh, so I'm going to write points and then I'm just going to put it at 1010 10. and you're going to see when I run this that I do get the word points here and it's in red and it's at the top of the screen and it's moved 10 out and 10 down and let's make this a little bigger and you're going to be able to see exactly how it moves, how you can move it around and where you should, how you should move it. So let's say I make the text size 32 
And what I mean by how you can move it is, where is the zero zero when I move this? And you're gonna notice it's actually at the bottom left corner. So if I move it 10, 10, this is the point that moves 10 down. Normally if I put 0, 0 here, you wouldn't be able to see this text. So if I do that, so let me close that and I'll set this to 0, 0. You're gonna, you're not gonna see anything because it's actually right here. It's where sketch 1 is written, that's where points is. So let's move this down a bit more. I'm gonna move it 10 over and I'm gonna move it down maybe 30. And now we get the points right exactly where we want it. So we're gonna keep points here. If you wanna put it somewhere else, you can move this around. It's not too big of a deal. There, you can use other fonts if you want, but I'm not gonna talk about that right now. There's something called load font uh, and create font, and you can play with those if you'd like. But I'm just gonna use the default font that comes with this, and I'm gonna increase my text size to 32. All right, now I'm also gonna change the color of this. I don't really want this, the, this to be the same color as the balls moving around. So I'm gonna make this maybe a kind of bluish green color. All right, so I got a blue here, so it says points. And I wanna actually use this points value I've made up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this on, plus points. So this is all, it's all pretty easy right now. So I have zero points. So how do I make this point, these points go up? Well, if we click on a ball, that happens in here. And every time we click the ball, it, it will, and it's on the ball, it will click here and, and go to if distance is less than 10 and it moves the ball off the screen. And then we, in here, we're gonna wanna add our points. So first thing though, let's let's set this back to 100, 100 or 10, 10, or it doesn't really matter as long as you can't see it when it's drawn off the screen. So let's do something really simple and let's just increase our points. Points is equal to points plus 10. So if I grab one of these balls here, click on this one and points go up. The unfortunate thing is it only goes up by 10. So we want to make it a little more interesting we want to make maybe the, if you're really fast with clicking on them, meaning if you click on them in a very short amount of time, you get a bonus. Or if you click on the faster balls, maybe you get a bonus as well. So faster balls are worth more and clicking on the balls faster gets more. So let's add a bonus in here. So in here, I'm gonna make another integer variable and I'm gonna call this the speed bonus. And speed bonus will just be equal to however fast the ball is moving. Uh, and that, that'll be good. Let's make it how fast the ball is moving. So let's do x delta i plus x delta i. Now you're going to notice that I have a, a problem here because x delta is declared as what? It's declared as a float. So it's floating point number. So this number is gonna be a float, but I'm trying to put it into an integer. And when I try to run this, it's gonna say, cannot convert from float to int. Thankfully, there's a very easy way to convert things. And we use this here, int, and we put everything we want that's a floating point that we want to be changed into an int, we put it in there, and it works. So let's go ahead and just add our, our speed bonus on here. And we're gonna make it more interesting in a minute, but let's do that. Okay, so I've got these and I've now got five, 15. Okay, so you notice I'm getting some different values here as things go up. But it's still not really that great. I've got my speed bonus and there's one problem with it. You notice when I first started and I clicked on that fast ball, what's happening here? So let's watch when I click on a ball going left. Notice my point is five. Why is my point five? It should be 10 plus something, right? Well, the thing is, is the ball going backwards and going up is a negative value. So I'm actually losing points off my 10 when I do this. So what I need to do is I need to take the absolute value of this. So the absolute value is just taken using the absolute value function. So here we go. We've got a function inside a function. So everything in here is calculated first. I got this becomes some floating point number. 
I then change that floating point number to an integer, and then I take the absolute value of it. If you don't know what absolute value is, absolute value is a number's distance from zero. That's the mathematical definition. Uh, really what it is, is if a number is negative, it makes it positive. And you can think of it like that if you'd want. So uh, a negative number like seven is seven units or seven spaces, seven whatever uh, you want to call them f to zero. So negative seven is just absolute value is seven. So if I run this now, I'll get a much better result. So notice if I click on this ball going up, I get two bonus points. And any ball I click on is going to give me some extra bonus points, which is nice. So let's add a time multiplier as well. Now time, we're going to use a function called millis in order to do that. And I want to give you an idea of what millis looks like. And I'm going to put it up here in the draw loop. And I'm just going to say millis and this. So, so millis, when the program starts, it starts running and it starts counting. And it's counting in milliseconds. So this first digit you see over here is going to be your seconds. So now I have 10 seconds and 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. And we can use this in order to create a bonus. And let's make our bonus, say, up to 20 seconds, we get a bonus for every ball we click. So to do that, I'm going to make a, let's make a time bonus. And the time bonus is going to say anything over 20 seconds, there's no time bonus. Anything under 20 seconds, we're going to get some type of bonus. So to do that, I'm going to go 20,000 divided by millis. Okay. So 20,000 divided by millis, what is this doing? Well, if we say we have 10 seconds, so if it's 10 seconds, that means it's going to be 10,000. So 20,000 divided by 10,000 gives me two, right? So that'll give me two bonus points if I do it. To, to make this more interesting, we should probably multiply it by something like 10 or maybe even 20 or something like that. Let's try multiplying it by 10. Uh, that means I'm going to need to make this more because this can be this is going to be some sort of uh, floating point number, so I do need to put these all in here. And I'm going to add a point zero to this. Why am I adding a point zero to this? Well, it might try to turn this into an integer if this is a twenty thousand here. It might automatically do it. Uh, sometimes it it does that depending on the language. It'll try to. Uh, round or cast it to a different uh, variable type. And we haven't I haven't talked about casting yet, even though I'm using it in this, I'm casting this to an integer, I'm going to cast this to an integer. So that means if I had like 20,000 over um, 20,000 over 19, that's going to be 1.1, 1.1 1 .1 times 10. Uh, if it's going to be something like 1.5, well, if it rounds down to one, that means I'm only going to get the 10 bonus points while or two if it's t if it rounded down to one because it ran down to one if i want it to be something like 1.5 times 10 to get 15 i need to keep this all as a floating point so it's a little confusing i'll put some examples on the website of uh, this exact line and the calculations you could get if you didn't use this and if you did so now that we have this time bonus we're going to need to add that on to our points down here so let's just go ahead and add that on and let's run it okay so now we have a speed and time bonus so if I click on these I should get big bonuses at the start and the longer I wait the lower the increasing score is gonna get Ooh, I'm gonna get a good bonus for that one now watch if I wait this take this time take time take my time let this ball run out a little bit and the bonus is going down each time so we have a game we just need it now to say game over when we're done so how do we do that well the easiest way to do that is to keep track of how many balls I have so in this case I have number of balls that's how many, how many total I have 
And what we're going to do is number of balls remaining. And we're going to make it equal to, let's make it equal to number of balls. And every time we click a ball, we're going to say number of balls remaining. And I'm going to use this this time, minus, minus. And that makes the ball it'll, it'll go down till we get to zero. And in here, I'm going to put an if statement at the end. And it's just going to say if number of balls remaining equals equals. Remember, this is the equality operator that's saying the, is the left side equal to the right side? Tell me true or false. If it is equal to zero, then I want to draw some new text on the screen. So I can copy this. I can put it in here. And I want to put this text kind of at the middle of the screen. Uh, so I'm going to put game over. And I'm going to get rid of points. And this is 32. So I'm going to assume this is going to be, this is how many characters, 10 characters. Uh, so let me put this at, mm, eh, let's say 200. I mean, how big is my screen again? 500. So let's say maybe uh, 270. Uh, no, I don't want to do 270. I want to do maybe 220. And this at 270. All right. And just to test this, I'm going to lower my number of balls to one so I don't have to click 10 things each time. And this is kind of the thing with with lining up text is you're going to have to you're going to have to play with it a little bit. All right, game over. So it's not quite where I want it. I want to move it over to the left a little bit. So let's move it over to maybe 160. And let's move it back up just to let's move it back up to 1 or 250 is fine actually. Okay, so there's my one ball. Game over. Perfect right there in the middle. It's exactly where I want it. All right. So that is the game and it's a very simple game but it does have all the elements that one would need it has well you can play it it has points and it has a nice game over at the end so simple game but hopefully it has been satisfying actually building this and, and learning a lot in the next part of the tutorial we're gonna completely forget about this I'll put this code up on the website and we're gonna start with object-oriented programming and we're going to do some something a little bit more interesting. So I hope to see you in lesson 14 and keep on coding. Uh, just keep playing around with this and the more you do it, the better you get. All right, take it easy.